everyone and welcome to Watercolor Wednesdays. Please stay tuned till the end of this video for a demo. So today we're going to be talking about color theory. Color theory in visual arts is the practice of mixing colors. It's an important part of the art making process as it goes hand in hand with composition. Let's go over the terms first. You have your primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors, also referred to as hues. By mixing your primary colors, you get all the colors in the color wheel. A secondary color is two primary colors mixed together, and a tertiary color is one secondary and one primary color mixed together. These are also split into warm and cool colors. Complementary colors are colors that are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. These colors will pop when they're placed next to each other. When trying to figure out the complementary color of a secondary color, you have to figure out what the primary colors are first. Then the remaining primary color will be the complementary one. For example, if you have a purple and you want to figure out its complementary color, then break down the purple first, which is red and blue. The remaining primary color is yellow, so that's its complementary color. Then you match the tint, tone, or shade, and you'll have a perfect complementary match. Next are analogous colors. These are situated next to each other on the color wheel. These color palettes are good for monochromatic compositions. They consist of a dominant primary color, a supporting color, which is usually a secondary or tertiary color, and a third one, which is, the, which is a mix of the first two. So what are tints, shades, and tones? Tints are when you take your base color and add white to it. Shades are when you take your base color and add black to it. Tones are when you take your base color and add a neutral gray to it. So in choosing my color palette for this painting, by looking at the reference picture, I can see that there are some very cool tones and hues that are used at the top and the bottom of the, paint, of the image, and in the center there are lots of warm tones. So for the cool tones, I'm starting with the Davies Gray, and I'm making a quick swatch of just pure Davies Gray just to see if that's the tone that I want, and I found that it was a little not cool enough for me, so I started to take out a little bit of the Davies Gray onto my palette, and I'm gonna add a little bit of Cerulean Blue to it to cool it down a little bit. Um, after I swatched that, I found that I would put in a little too much of the blue, so I added some more Davies Gray to it, and then swatched it again and got it to exactly where I wanted it to be. The reason why I wanted this gray to be a little bit on the cooler side is because I wanted it to pop and have a contrast um, to the center and all the warm tones that are used and the warm hues that are used in the center of the picture. I also found that the sky and the water have slightly different tones to them, different hues to them. The water has the Davies gray but a little bit more blue to it so after um, I laid down the Davies Gray at the bottom of the image. I added a little bit more blue just so that there's a contrast and a difference and you can see a difference between the sky and the water. Once that's done, I'm starting to swatch all the warm tones that I'm going to need for the sky. So I'm starting with a very bright lemon yellow and then I'm gonna blend in a little bit of the orange, like a very, it's actually called a deep yellow, but it reads as orange. It's a very bright neon orange, a very, very warm tone. So I'm blending that in just to see what that transition looks like. And then I'm adding a little bit of permanent pink, which 
you wouldn't normally think you would use but like it's a very soft subtle pink um, and it works really well next to the orange and the yellow and then the last the deepest hue that's in the sunset is a permanent violet so I'm using that as well uh, but in the painting itself and in the image itself it's used very sparingly so the swatch is just to make sure that all of these colors work together and that the hues and the tones and the tints and the shades are all in the same family now the grays are obviously a different tone and the colors the warmer hues are very 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 bright there's no mixing of any white to tint the colors or black to shade the colors or gray to tone the colors down so there's a high contrast when it comes to the hues between the sky and the water and these uh, warm tones that are in the center of the picture again putting these two things together that are opposites make the image pop so what i've done here is on my arches cold press uh, fine grain 300 gram uh, paper watercolor paper I have masking taped off a full frame and I'm starting with the wet on wet technique using a large mop brush and I'm applying that Davies gray and cerulean blue sky to the top I'm just adding a very little amount of pigment in the beginning and then washing it out with a lot of water and dragging it down to at least about two-thirds the way down of the of the paper Now I'm doing the same with the bottom of the image as if you look at the reference picture you can see that the cool tones are on both the top and the bottom and at the bottom because it is water I'm adding a little bit more cerulean blue. Now I'm starting to add the warmer tones I'm starting with the lemon yellow and because there's the reflection in the water as well whatever I'm doing to the top I'm doing to the bottom as well but at the bottom I'm making the pigment a little bit more intense so that you can see the distinction between the waterline and what's sky. So as I keep going, I'm going to build these colors the same way that we did when we made our swatch. So I'm going to start adding a little bit of the permanent pink and then that really deep uh, yellow, which reads as an orange, and then the permanent purple. And you want to build these layers and these colors and go back and forth, back and forth, blending them until you get a nice gradient that you're happy with. Next, you're going to completely dry your canvas. I'm using a hair dryer over here. And once this layer is completely dry, then you're going to place the same colors again on top of these, this layer and then just intensify some areas of it rather than the whole thing. So for the base layer, you want to go all over the paper and fill up the entire space. I've just left a little bit of white paper in the middle so that the trees and the little island of trees will pop but you want to start sparingly use the pigment on the next layer once the paper is completely dry and you want to start using a little bit less water on your brush as well therefore you'll be able to get these really nice textured uh, lines on your piece and it will just add a lot more character to your painting
For the detailing, I have switched to a small round um, mop brush. It's a very, very small one, so this way I have a little bit more control over the pigment. I'm using Lamp Black for this, and so I'm just going to very roughly sketch in with my brush a little island shape and then start to put in the tree trunks and then I'm going to switch brushes to a more um, a fatter nib uh, so that I can stipple the branches and the leaves into the trees. For the refraction, you want to start off by just painting in the larger um, things that you can see. So I'm only painting in the tree trunks and even that I'm doing kind of haphazardly and not really completely mirroring what the landscape actually is because it's all getting blurred out by the water. So once I'm happy with those initial tree trunks, I'm going to go back in with my mop brush and lay down a layer of water on top and then use a fan brush to blur the images. Don't worry about harsh lines at this point because you can take them out later on. So I'm just putting that initial layer with the fan brush just to give an idea and a hint of the shadows and then once that layer is dry I'm going to go back in with my smaller mop brush and put in the details of those tree trunks again.
if you do end up with any harsh dark lines like I have over here, I'm just going to take my mop brush and just run it through the edge on the edge of that line that I don't want and I want to erase and it'll blend away really really easily. Last step is to peel away the masking tape which is oh so satisfying and there you have it you have your sunset painting done. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and join me for the next one. Have a great day!